Hi guys, today we are in John chapter 5 verses 1 through 17 and as we move into John 5 we see the Jews that uh, the Jews are making a pilgrimage to Jerusalem for one of their holy day feasts. So in verse 2 we have noted here that um, in Jerusalem there was a certain place called Bethesda. It was a pool where certain people, the weak, the lame, the sick, they would lay around this pool waiting um, because apparently they thought um, that this water, uh, it, it seemed to be healing in nature. There was some sort of healing power or healing um, property that this water had. And so the sick and the lame would come here hoping to be healed, at least partially. So these guys would wait until the water got stirred up and then they would get into the water hoping to be healed. And so the problem is it's hard to get into a pool when you can't walk, right? So Jesus comes walking by. He's coming into Jerusalem for the feast. And he sees a guy who has this problem. He's there because he's broken, but he can't seem to get into the water on his own. Jesus can see that this guy's been there a really, really long time. And so there are some telltale signs when you've been waiting and you've been waiting and you've been waiting and you're just weary. It's written all over your face. So Jesus sees this. You know, we should recognize this too in one another and help one another. But you know what? Think stuck. This guy's just stuck. He's in a place he can't get, he cannot get out of on his own. He at least at one point had great hope that this water might be able to heal him. And if he hadn't had that hope, he wouldn't have been there. Because it takes a lot of effort for someone who's crippled and lame to, um, to get anywhere. Right, So he's at this place because he has some sort of hope or some sort of uh, belief that this, this water can help him. But the problem was he had no help. He needed help even to just get into this water that may or may not be of any real healing value to him. He needed help. So he's desperate. He's alone. He's laying on the ground probably at this point face down. He has no real options and he's been there for a really, really long time. So. He's discouraged, he's weary, I'm sure, and Jesus sees him, he sees this, he considers him, and so we need to consider that. Jesus doesn't just walk by this guy, he sees him, he knows him, he knows the weight that this guy's been carrying, he knows how long he's been hurting, he knows that the man needs healing, and so he, he sees and he knows all about this man's need. Um, without the guy even saying anything, right? You can see it. And so, what does Jesus do? He doesn't walk on by and hurry on to get to his super important religious feast. No. He doesn't say, I'll pray for you when I get to the temple. No. Jesus stops. He stops. He sees the guy and he asks him a simple question. He says, do you want to be healed? John 5, 6. And so, that's easy enough, right? Simple yes or no. Do you want to? Do you want to? Well, the guy doesn't simply say yes, as, you know, we might expect if he really knew Jesus and knew that Jesus could heal him. He would have just said, yes, heal me, master. But instead, he starts to explain how he has no help. He starts to say all the reasons why he can't get to where he really needs to go. And he starts to tell Jesus all about the stops and the roadblocks in his life that he just can't seem to overcome. And you know what? That's what we do. When I read this, I'm like, oh, well, there we are, right? Instead of taking Jesus at his word and merely answering him with simplicity and obedience, we stall. We see all the reasons why we can't just simply answer him, just yes or no, Will I follow? Will I not? Right? Do you want to be healed? Do we? We got to take Jesus at his word. We got to stop making excuses and seeing everything but the solution. So Jesus pays no mind to his excuses and he tells him, and there were valid excuses. Let's just put it that way. I mean, if you can't walk, you can't walk, right? So, but anyway, Jesus doesn't pay any mind to that. He says, get up, take your bed and walk. John 5, 8. Jesus stops his seeing everything except the solution now. Um, he himself was standing right in front of him and he was the solution. He stops his mouth by healing him. And 
that's amazing in itself. But how does Jesus heal him? What, what words does he use? I think it's important. He says, get up. Get up. Get up, guy who can't get up. He's asking this guy to do the impossible, right? Get up. Stop laying down. I have the power to heal you. That's what Jesus is saying. So stop failing to see the real solution, which is in me. I'm standing here in front of you. Stop looking at all your problems and finding all the reasons why it's so impossible for you to be healed. I know it seems impossible. It is impossible. But I am the king of making the impossible possible. So get up. Get up. And so get up. This guy could have been like... Um, he could, he could have argued, right, with Jesus again. Like, dude, I can't get up. Look at all this stuff. Look at all these reasons. And if I could get up, I would, right? But instead, this time, he takes Jesus right at his word, and he gets up. The guy gets up. He's 100% healed right then and there, and that's amazing. But, dun, 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 guess who doesn't like it? Guess who doesn't like it one bit? It's the Sabbath here, guys. There's a holy feast about to go on here, and that's against the law. Used to be crippled man five minutes ago. Hey, uh, miracle or no miracle, you can't do that. No mat carrying today, sir. That's against the law. But Jesus said to, he replies, that guy over there, he healed me. He told me to. And so going back, we need to go back to the wedding at Cana where Jesus turned the water into wine here again. Just like his mother told the servants, do whatever he tells you. This man did what Jesus said. He got up and now he's paying for it, right? These guys are like, you can't carry your mat. And he's like, he told me to. And, you know, what that shows us is how bankrupt, how in extremely entirely bankrupt religious rules really are. They're bankrupt in the face of the commands of a healing Savior. So this guy doesn't really know Jesus, but somehow he wanders into the temple and he finds him again later on after the healing and after he's been approached by these Jews. Where else would Jesus be, right? So Jesus stops him again and he says, look, you're well. Aren't you thankful, buddy? Like, stop sinning. There's, you know, just don't sin more because you know, sin will hurt you. Stop sinning so nothing worse will happen to you, he says. And you have to wonder why Jesus says that. I mean, and I know Jesus always tells us to stop sinning. He doesn't want us to sin because it hurts us. And that's exactly what he says to this guy. But could it be that this guy actually came looking for Jesus because the Jews were accusing him and he didn't want to go down for it? So maybe he's looking around for Jesus like, oh, I got to find that guy so I can point him out. Well, that's what he does. He goes right on back to the Jews, the very men who were trying to find fault in him, who were looking desperately for fault to find in Jesus. And, and he says, hey, it was that guy. It was Jesus over there. I found him. He's the one that did the miracle. And he's the one that told me to carry my mat that I'm not supposed to be carrying, according to you guys. So in return for this gracious, merciful miracle, Jesus gets persecuted by these religious rule-keeping Nazis because they have nothing better to do than find things of which to accuse him. Their jealousy and their pride are running their lives. And so we see this again. Meanwhile, though, meanwhile, Jesus just keeps on doing his father's work. He's like, guys, get a life. Like, I got things to do. Stop searching to find fault in me for your own crazy reasons. Like, I'm busy. I got a world to save here. Don't you see what I'm doing? Like I'm healing people. Isn't that good enough for you? And so, you know, it just makes me think like, do we want to be healed? Do we? We got to stop seeing every single thing besides the solution. Jesus Christ is the solution. He's standing right in, in front of us. He's omnipresent. He's always here. And guess what he's saying? He's saying, get up, get up, stop seeing all everything that is stopping you and all the roadblocks and all the reasons why you can't do the impossible because I'm the king of making the impossible possible. Get up and follow me. Jesus is standing right in front of us all the time saying, get up, stop sinning. 
ignore the religious rule Nazis. They're crazy. Like, they're going nowhere, guys. Don't worry about them. You stay busy doing your father's work. You obey me. That's the example that Jesus set because there's a whole world out there to save. And you ain't going to be part of my salvation and my gospel plan. And I can't use you if you're going to be worried about what those guys over there want to say and how they're going to treat you. Because look how they treated me. They're going to treat you with the same contempt and the same rejection and the same despising hatred and jealousy that they treated me. So get used to it. Don't pay it any mind, absorb that pain, and keep doing the same work. Be busy about your father's work. That's what I did. That's what you need to do. There's a whole world to save out there, guys. Ignore that crap. Um, so get up. Get up and let's go. And that's what Jesus is saying. That's what he's calling us to. He's going to do the impossible through us. It will just simply, simply listen and obey him when he speaks take him at his word his word the bible okay that's his word listen to it let's do that like that's the solution jesus christ is the solution doesn't matter what the roadblocks are you keep going keep going so amen and amen it's a very encouraging word today at least to me i hope it's helpful for you guys too and thanks for listening and i'll see you tomorrow have a good day